Hi, this is Jacqueline Wolven. I'm a constant contact authorized local expert. I am a contributor to Huffington Post, a Main Street, Arkansas um, downtown director, and I am a small business consultant nationwide. And so I'm here today to talk about the power of the picture, using Instagram to tell your story and make real sales. I want to give a shout out to Constant Contact for allowing me to offer this seminar for free. If you're ever looking for opportunities uh, to learn, constantcontactseminars.com is a great place to go. You can also go to my website at JacquelineWolven.com, and I have a where I'm teaching next. And I'd love to see you in person sometime and back online. So let's get started. Instagram has grown exponentially. There are 150 million monthly active users. It's a tremendous marketing tool. It reaches the under 35 marketing segment, which is really hard to get unless you're buying television advertising, which I assume no one on this call is. Um, and it is a way to share the power of the picture in a way that's unique only to this social media platform. Yes, you can show, share photographs and other places, but this is truly where they shine. Um, it has really had tremendous growth. And of course, it's the newbie on the block. And that's what always happens with a new social media platform. But it's one that has started to bear real fruit, and i.e. real sales for customers, uh, 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 users across the board. So it's definitely something to consider for your marketing plan in the next quarter or the next year. So we're going to start with getting set up, move on to marketing effectively using Instagram, and then how we can take it up a notch or two. And so I assume all of you are set up. It is an app for your phone. It's uh, uh, either on um, Android or uh, uh, iOS. And so you have the capability to download it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And you can set up your, your account. Um, I'm hoping you all have it. It also has a website as part of it, but that's not where people live. They live with it on their mobile device. So let's get set up. You add a bio, a profile picture, and you can connect to a particular website. And so those are your three real options for setting up your brand on your account. So you have the profile picture. The best practice is that you have the same profile picture across all social media. Um, I think I'm failing at that right now. I'm, I'm trying to, to tag them all and get them all changed, but that is the best practice. So that when someone sees you on one social media platform, they have the, the aha moment, the recognizing moment that you're the same person on Facebook, that you are on LinkedIn, that you are on, um, that you are on Instagram, that you are on Twitter, so forth and so on. Uh, you have the opportunity to have a small bio. I don't think it's very long, but there are some things you can say about your business or organization. The best practice I really like here is that they include both their phone number and an email. Now, if they're if they are brick and mortar and they are Greg Dog Boutique is a resale, vintage resale in Northwest Arkansas. I follow them because they have tremendous um, success on their Instagram account. I just really love to see how they uh, style and display their photos. And, and the only best practice thing that I would add to this is to add their street address. Um, people might not know that where they are and they might actually want to try to go to their store. So they also have a link here directly to their shop so that you can purchase their products online. This is a great opportunity for you to have people land where you want them to land. So if Say for the month of October, you are highlighting a specific product, maybe you're a candle store and you're selling, you know, pumpkin spice candles, you would send them directly to that page. Remember, people are on their mobile devices. And if you're sending them to their your home page of your site and expecting that they're going to be able to navigate where you want them to purchase your product or sign up for your event, that's actually... They probably won't. They'll bounce right off. But if you change this link often, sending them to where they want you want them to go, um, you'll have a better success rate. You can always in your uh, when you publish a photo, say, you know, check the link up up above. We've got pumpkin spice candles on sale today. You know, whatever it is, you have that opportunity to remember um, to drive them back to your profile. The thing about Instagram is. 
this is the only link you get. Uh, it doesn't have um, hot links in any of the other areas. And so you can put a link in your post or a comment, but people can't even copy and paste that. And so this is it, this is what you get. So make sure that you're using this in the most effective way for your, um, um, for your business. So let's get started. Everybody wants to know how to market effectively on Instagram. We're gonna talk about brand content, real life, behind the scenes, and then those uh, adorable quotes that we see everywhere. So one thing that I think that people haven't quite grasped is that a brand no longer constitutes just a um, logo or a sign or their business card. A brand now reflects your photography. It really always has, but mostly for larger corporations. The advent of every single person having the best camera they've ever had on their phone means that now you have this opportunity to showcase your brand with photography. And the deal is, it needs to match your brand. If you're selling, Home and cozy, your brands need to reflect that. Your photography needs to reflect that. If you're selling luxury, your photographs need to express that. If you're a child photographer, you need to be showcasing beautiful child photography, not pictures of, you know, old couples on the beach. It's it's not in the same, it's not in the same genre. So you need to be really mindful of the story you're trying to tell and have your Instagram reflect that. So it's no longer just your logo, folks. You need to start thinking about your photography. That may be even the filters that you use, uh, the, you know, are you a black and white look? Are you, uh, you know, very vintage? These are things you want to think about and be consistent in how you display your photography. So what's fun about this, that top one is Hello Apparel. They are a uh, clothing company that's young, hip, fresh, uh, beautifully styled. Uh, I think we sell them locally and uh, they're also online. <laughs> what I like about them is that they show both customer photos and they keep their brand in every single one. So when I look at that, I look across the board and I think you you are fun, you are accessible, you are you are very, you know, you are you would be fun to wear. And that's what they're trying to say in every single one uh, of their photographs and they do an excellent job. The the bottom photo of course is the the mega brand Starbucks. Um, and they went from uh, summer, uh, they, they were all light and fun and, you know, iced mochas and, you know, whatever it was that was uh, sunny and, and fresh. And they switched in early September to an autumn. As soon as they launched their PSL, which they launched early this year, they decided that they would take it from a uh, uh, you know, sunny and fun to an autumn and crisp. And so now all of their brand imagery reflects that new feeling. And so this is a great example of using brand photography and then shifting it up based on the season or the product that they're trying to sell. And so that is a possibility for you, but it was definitely a conscious choice for Starbucks. The power of using images to share allowed you to you know, tell your brand story. Look at feeds and see that how other brands are sharing their, their brand visually. I highly recommend that you find your competitors. And that means if you're a, a women's retail, you need to be following Macy's and Nordstrom's and the, the bigger players in that, as well as the smaller boutiques that might be in your area or in other locations. And if it's the same for any other store, if you're a cooking supply, you would be doing your local stores that sell that, but you would also be, you know, following um, uh, William Sonoma and all of the other larger, you know, Crate and Barrel, some of the larger kitchen supplies. You need to see how they're doing it. And not that you might be able to do it exactly, and I would never ask you to copy, but it gives you some aha moments of how you could express yourself visually. 
So think about how would you show your brand visually? Do your photos match your story? Do they match the, the feeling that you're trying to evoke? So if you're luxury and let's say you're selling high-end jewelry, you wouldn't want to throw in a photo of, you know, um, inexpensive jewelry from Walmart that would just never be the right mix for you. Or if you're selling luxury and you then show someone's beat up car, that's just not the fit. So you need to think about that in your Instagram. Are you portraying the story that you want to tell? That is an important, that's the shift. You know, you've got the logo, you've got the sign, you've got the business cards, you know, whatever that is. But now when you're taking photos and it not just this one or that one, it's all of them. Are they reflecting the story, the brand, and, and ultimately the vision of who you are as a company or an organization? Here's two examples of engaging, um, uh, and I love, I just love this. So you've got Whoa, Wait, Walmart at the top, and this is a great way to uh, look at how their products would be used in a way that's accessible and fun. Um, it's not the corporate account. It is owned by the corporation, but it's not the corporate account. They have a Walmart on Instagram, but this is a obviously taken by an iPhone for the most part, in store for the most part. And the idea being, whoa, I didn't know they sold that at Walmart. That's definitely what that is. And then below that, you see Target, and Target has multiple Instagram feeds. This is just one of them. And it's the same idea. Whoa, that's at Target. Oh, they did it again. This is so great. You know, such great style, such great design. And this is a great way to engage people in your brand, to make it accessible, to make them feel as if they are um, part of the brand and not just a stuffy corporate feel. So using customer shots allows you to build a brand message that isn't corporate. Being relatable on, on Instagram, IG means Instagram, is an important component. So you need to realize that um, this isn't necessarily the advertising photography that you would use for, for a print ad. This is what you would take on your phone. Now, granted, you can definitely take them on your uh, beautiful DSLR and, and bring them in. But, but for the most part, these are casual, captured images in the moment. And that's what's relatable on Instagram. And also remember, it's not about you all the time. Show your customer file photos, engage them in, let them see that you are a, a real company, a real, have real products that you could use in the home or use, you know, someone would actually purchase and buy. That's another thing that's really part of the, the Instagram community. So behind the scenes, these are two examples, Northwest Arkansas examples. Um, I actually know these people, so that's kind of fun to use them in this. The top one is Big Bot Design, and he's an illustrator and designer. And he, these are all his original illustrations. And he's fun because he shows you works in progress, you know, before a t-shirt gets printed or before an ad gets built or whatever it is that he's creating. And um, just a great example. So anyone who has... Um, artistry allows you to do the before, the middle, the after, the process, show those behind the scenes. Paradigm Supply is a merchandise and artist supplies out of Springdale. And they are a couple team who, and they do a great job of getting you excited about what the possibilities are. They show the process, they show sneak peeks, they show um, little bits, they unveil certain parts, and they really get their audience engaged in, in what they're doing. They've done it, they've built this very, uh, started very small, and they've built a tremendous business being, and Instagram is definitely a part of that. So showing behind the curtain and being authentic is just part of it now. We don't get to be um, the corporate image. We and, and I know you're probably a small business and you're thinking, I'm not a corporate image, but you know, you're not you're not hiding behind your business. You're real people doing great things. And so some ideas are for retail, open the boxes they come in, or once they get off the truck, show those 15 boxes of new um, merchandise that's about to be put on the shelves. You know, show a piece in the works, show the making of a display, show the hard work of your team if you're an um 
And this is in any situation, you know, you run a cupcake shop, show the person baking. Or if you've got a team of volunteers putting together bags, show those bags being stuffed for the event that's happening. Be, let people be in on what it makes to uh, to make it all happen. And I, it's an important and exciting part of Instagram. And an easy way for you, you don't have to stage a bunch of photos. These are can be captured pretty quickly. Quotes, they drive the internet. They drive some people crazy, but there is significant data that shows that you get likes and followers when you post quotes. Do it in moderation. Um, but this is Design Sponge. Grace runs a, a lifestyle blog, Design Sponge. It's gorgeous. It's it's one of the most traffic um, sites. It's just beautiful. Her photography is, is stunning. Um, but when I pulled her up, I was thinking of using her for something else. And then, of course, front and center, she'd snap this great photo of a, of a quote. And so you can use software, you know, an app to add text to a um to your photograph, I use Over as an app, and I use Rona, R-H-O-N-N-A, as an app. There's a lot of apps out there that allow you to add text on top of your photo. She obviously snapped something in a doorway. Um, whatever works. Uh, use these in moderation, maybe 10% of the time. But people love them. People love it. I also want to show you, so she did use in her profile where she put a link to a specific page she wanted you to go to. So she changes this up often, and that's what I was talking about earlier. We want to make sure that people are um, able to go where you want them to go. So feel free to change that profile and that, and that link as often as you want. So the, about the quotes, use them in moderation, but use them because they drive the happy. There's the, here's how it works. Happy equals more likes, equals more followers, equals more sales, equals more happy. Um, you will get followers and you will get more likes if you're more positive on Instagram. It's one of the happiest uh, social media platforms that there are. Not a lot of politics, not a lot of 24-hour news media, not a lot of doom and gloom. And so be part of that. Be part of that community that's building a happier world. I don't know if that's what they think, but that's definitely what's happening there. So this isn't the place to begrown your business. This is a place to be excited and interested and share, you know, something, something good. And a quote is an easy way to do that. So let's take it up a notch. We're going to talk more about user-generated content joining the social party, hashtags, and a call to action. So this was a fun contest done by PBS uh, called hashtag don't stop believing. And uh, I could have you all raise your hands and tell me if you know who that is. I think everyone knows it was the uh, 10th or 11th grade prom song for, for my class. I'm sure of it. Um, original singer to Journey, I should say. But they, uh, PBS used this great contest to have people sing, upload, tag, and win an opportunity to be featured in a documentary that they were doing on Don't Stop Believing. And so people did. They, people, all kinds of people, kids, um, grandmas, moms, you know, all kinds of people saying don't stop believing and then use this hashtag. Very creative concept, great way to launch their project, great way to get people engaged. This, this is a real opportunity for the business or organization. It takes planning. I would suggest you do no more than one to two of these a year in a small business or organization because you want to do them well. Um, there's no use putting a marketing campaign around a hashtag and generating user content if it doesn't come across well. So this is something that you plan for just like you would plan for an event or a sale. I would definitely think about how you were going to use this, but this is a great example of getting other people to generate the content for you. It gets hard to take a photograph every day. And so this is, this is one way to do that so that you don't have to constantly have content uh, to generate. It engages your audience. It leverages their content, allows you to use theirs. I use Regram is an app. So you can regram their photographs, search the hashtag, regram their photographs. 
it involves them in their brand. It makes them part of you. So then they start to have some brand loyalty, some loyalty to your store or your organization. It can be a contest, but it doesn't have to be a contest. That's what's so great about it is that people could get excited about um, recycling or doing something good or whatever it is your initiative is. And it doesn't have to be where they win something. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. For a retail store, you might want them to um, get a $50 gift certificate to come actually into your store or to buy online. You know, there are opportunities for you, uh, but it doesn't have to. It's just a great way to not have to create all of the content yourself. Join the social party. Here's the great thing. Other people have created ridiculous uh, ideas that people just got on the bandwagon for. And one of those is Throwback Thursday. Here's an example of some pretty famous folks. You got uh, Snoop Dogg down there and Gabby Giffords and, of course, uh, President Barack Obama and Michelle. And uh, they have thrown back or showed photos of themselves in a younger and younger years. And this happens every Thursday. People across uh, internationally are showing pictures of themselves. And the question I get most frequently is why? Well, people have a sense of nostalgia and they want to show a peek into their lives. So you can get on the bandwagon too. You can, you can use the hashtag TBT, which is Throwback Thursday, or the hashtag Throwback Thursday, which is obviously very long, but TBT. And you would uh, throw show uh, pictures of it, of your kids, you know, the, your staff as kids, or your volunteers as kids, or your or your business card when you first started. I'm sure it's evolved. It's a lot of opportunities to twist the Throwback Thursday into something new. Show what you wore in the '80s. I know I sadly probably had red suits with uh, shoulder pads, uh, and so you know, show that you can show those kind of funny, you know. And sort of allow yourself the opportunity to know times have changed, but it, this is where I started and it's kind of fun. And you don't have to create a campaign around it. People search Throwback Thursday. They like Throwback Thursday uh, posts and you get more engagement. Just join the social party. Here are the top 10 uh, hashtags currently. Love, Instagood, me, Throwback Thursday, TBT. Follow, cute, follow me, it's photo of the day, tags for likes and happy. And the ones here that I really like are love, Insta good, throwback Thursday, a photo of the day. Uh, those are great. And um, people look for those, they search those, they engage and they like those. And so when you're doing a photo, you just add that hashtag. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to be part of the social party. You didn't have to create it. You just engaged in the stream of people who are already showing things that are good or things that are, uh, you know, happy or, or those pictures of yourselves from 1972. Jump on what's happening in the news culturally or in your area. So if there's some big... Um, story happening in your area or people are talking about for us here of course it's fall and so we're getting lots of questions about fall leaves and so you know uh you could definitely use hashtag autumn as a you know or fall color as a hashtag it's being used you know find out what's what's important and and start using those yourself use popular hashtags we definitely want to engage in what's already happening Small businesses have a hard enough time just closing the books every day that they, they don't need to recreate the wheel. So just getting being part of it is something that makes your life a lot easier. Here's some examples of that. Um, people have created their own hashtags. So Charity Water is one of the foremost new, very new nonprofits who launched online and has just done tremendous work on the ground, of course, but raises most of their money online. Um, I wanted to show you this because they use hashtag September campaign. They've used this for multiple years and uh, they have definitely branded that as part of their organization. So a brand is no longer just your logo and your colors and maybe your tagline. You are now considering what hashtag you would use. When I work with a company or an organization or a project, we think about the hashtag or the three hashtags we might want to use for that 
that particular company or event. And so they have September campaign. They have put it in, up in their, when they uploaded the photo. And I wanted to see, so in 12 minutes, they had 660 people like that photo. It's a tremendous amount of people in a small amount of time engaging in their brand and in their content. Uh, uh, best practice, by the way, they did a call out to the photographer. Beautiful. But if you have other people taking your photography, nice way to, to share the love. That's what the internet is all about. Social, social media is social. We're supposed to be sharing. Um, it's just a great example of a hashtag use and, and really branding that for their company. The bottom one, she's an Etsy reseller. And what I like about this is that she has two best practices happening here. She is featuring somebody else's product um, and with a hashtag, with a, you know, a link to them. I love this. Um, it's not always about you, remember. And then the next best practice here is that she's put all of the hashtags in the first comment. And the reason is, is that she will share this photo. Here's the business aha. <laughs> you can share from Instagram to Facebook, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, Flickr, uh, across the board. And so what you put in that when you upload the photo uh, goes along with it. So this is a great tool. You use one, one thing and you get to choose where you, where you share it. It doesn't automatically happen. And so here's some best practices. One, Instagram is a place for multiple hashtags. You can use a hundred in your first comment if you want. It, it's a, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy how many hashtags are used. But that's not true for Twitter or Facebook. So a one to three rule is a really good way to think about that, the, where you're putting in the top. It's also important to understand what a hashtag is. So a hashtag, for those of you who don't know, is just code. It tells Google who runs the internet. There's a numerical sign, the, the pound sign, if some of you are as old as I am, it, it was called the pound sign. So the pound sign or the hashtag and then some words behind it. It cannot have punctuation or numbers and it needs to be all crunched together. So I use, I love my work. Um, I love my life is another one that I use. Uh, do good work is another. And I crush all that together into one big uh, messed up word. Um, that's how a hashtag works. Um, and it's just code and tells Google, oh, there's a code and that must be important. And so it has higher search value sometimes than keywords do. Unless, uh, so, so know that that's what all a hashtag is an alert to Google saying, oh, that seems important and people follow them. They will click on them and then see all of the photos or all of the tweets or all of the Facebook posts that have to do with that particular hashtag. So, so that's why we use them and that's why it's important. They're a great way to get your brand noticed, especially if you're tagging into some of the ones that are good for your um, industry. So look at what the major retailers are using. Look at what your community is using. Look at what your nonprofit sector is using and, and use those as well. 80% uh, of brand posts have at least one and the average post will have three. So when, like I said, when I'm developing a brand for a company or an event or, um, or an organization, we're talking about what the hashtags are going to be. It's in, in, and we try to be very consistent in the use of them. It's no longer, you know, just random hashtags, although those pop up too sometimes, but there's always a consistency and that's part of the brand that we're trying to tell. Find them that's used in your sector, your community, your region. You can just search um, and makes it so easy. Use multiple, but you know, three is a best practice. And then the etiquette is if you're cross posting, just put them in the first comment in Instagram because they won't transfer to Facebook or Twitter or Flickr. It's a great way to use multiple uh, hashtags. So locally, so here I am in Northwest Arkansas, which like I said, is gorgeous today. Uh, we use NWARK. The reason we don't use NWA, by the way, is it's an 80s rap group. Um, so we use NWARK, WPS, and SEC. So those of you that know me at all know I have no uh, knowledge of sports or sporting things or all the sports. And so it's kind of funny. I will have to sometimes talk about sporting events. And I do know this pregame, during game and after game, uh, Razorback football uses WPS. And so that's the call to the hogs. 
and you will see that everywhere. So your area has this too, whatever it is that's your um, um, locally, regional, sports, all of those things, and you too can tag into that. Our town has one, and yours most likely does too. Uh, you can just call your Chamber of Commerce or your uh, Main Street program and ask what their hashtag is, and you can start using theirs. Ours is only in Eureka. And then IG Arkansas. IG is Instagram, so that's the Arkansas community of Instagram. And there's an IG for everywhere. So you could just Google Instagram hashtag for Ohio you know, California, Washington, wherever you are. Um, and then hashtag Arkansas and there, and every state has it. Every state has it for weather. Every state has it for politics. Uh, and you can just Google those. They're so easy to find and add those. If, especially if you're trying to build retail um, foot traffic or organization foot traffic or interest in your region or your state, you want to start using those in, in your posts. I love a call to action. So marketing isn't anything if it doesn't actually make somebody do something. And here's the truth, is that people don't know what to do, and they certainly don't know what you want them to do, so you have to tell them. This is fun. I follow Brisk Tea. I'm not a Brisk Tea drinker, but they have a great Instagram account. Uh, and this, the call to action, the person who tags the most friends wins. So they wanted people to tag their friends. You didn't win anything. But it would just drive them crazy, and it was just a fun way. But what I wanted to show you is how clearly they were showing what they wanted you to do. Uh, and it was just for fun. Nobody was winning anything. But I can guarantee you that so they tagged a friend. That friend was notified that they were tagged. They went to go look at the post. They either liked the post or they liked the they liked the account. It's a great way in moderation. Don't use this all the time, but the call to action is very clearly stated here. It's a great best practice. Oreo, another national brand that I absolutely recommend following. Um, guiltily, I probably have eaten a few Oreos in my time, but they're, they're not something I buy regularly, but I do follow their social accounts. And here they have, this is really simple. They were going to do a program on Oreo plated. So that was the hashtag and get your story on our plate. They wanted you to put your idea and people wrote their idea uh, in the comment. And then the fun part is it's three months later and they are starting to make those ideas come to life. And so this was a great way to get customer engagement. They told people what they wanted them to do. It's a great call to action to get people engaged in your brand. This or that, so we want to get people to follow our account and get engaged in our posts. Uh, this or that is great. I hosted, uh, I was working on the brand for a music festival, and we had the t-shirt designer design several ideas, and we took two of those, and we had people choose this or that, which one they liked. Uh, we had over 650 people choose A or B, and a great way to show. I use um, PicStitch is the app that I use for that. Uh, there's multiple photo apps that'll stitch two photos together. It's a great way to show. If you were in a retail setting and you um, had a steel pan and a cast iron pan, you could say this or that. You know, people could choose. Do they love the 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 steel pan or do they or do they love the cast iron pan? Cast iron over here, by the way. Um, so yeah, you know, it's a great way to engage people. People want to give their opinion. Let them comment with your own idea. Let people let people share their story, their idea. Tag a friend. You know, in limited moderation. This is kind of fun. And then add a line. Those are things like, you know, something on my bus bucket list is, you know, and let people tell you what, what's on their bucket list or someone who inspires me and let them tag the person that inspires them. You know, whatever those things are, let them, let them add a line to a story. Getting people to engage is hard and, and expecting them to engage is, is even harder. And we're, we're in a time where people just click like, 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 or, you know, heart, 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 whatever it is. And uh, if you want real engagement, you have to tell them what you want to do. So here's some resources. I highly recommend the blog for Instagram. It's really quite tremendous. Um, 
people don't probably access that enough. They have, they will showcase the best in retail, the, you know, the best in cars, the best in, you know, whatever the accounts are. They do a great roundup. They show beautiful photography. They just really have an excellent resource that's free. And I wish people would really take some time and go explore that. Um, Gram feed, another way to explore Instagram online that's a little different. Iconosquare allows you to look at insights just like you do on Google Analytics or Facebook. It's a great way to see if your posts are making any uh, any nudge at all, and it is um, free. And then Regram Me is the app that I use to um, showcase other people's photography. So if you had a contest and you had a hashtag, you could search that hashtag and Regram Me, Regram the photo that someone posted and post it on your own account. Um, some of the questions that come up at are, which account should I use? Now, Instagram only allows one account at a time. You have to actually sign in and sign out of other accounts, which is really horrible. I get that. Um, I am not the Instagram goddess and have a magic wand to make the company do something different. But I highly recommend you reach out to them and say you want multiple account access. Uh, uh, I have heard you, and I would like you to tell them now. Um, but people ask about which account you should use. And although I'm not all about the money all the time, I'm going to tell you this. Use the account that you derive the most community and revenue from. So if that's your business account, then you should be in your business account. If you are just interested in um, sharing photos with your friends, then you just use your personal account. Now, I'm an exception to that. I actually, um, I am my brand, and so I live in my my account. Um, you know, I, I'm selling the brand of living the life that you want and doing the work that you love. And so I show that in my own Instagram account. And now if that's the case for you, where you are an independent person selling your concepts and ideas, then definitely stay in your own account. But if you derive most of your income, and that is where my income comes from, so if, but if your income comes from your business or organization or whatever it is that you're doing, that's the account you need to be in. So uh, yeah, not always about the money, but let's think about this. It's a marketing tool and time equals money. And so you wanna make sure that you're spending the time that's gonna derive the most community and the most money. Another question that comes up often is how do I get more followers? Well, follow other people. There are, uh, there are tools you can use justunfollow.com. I will say this, do not look at who has unfollowed you. It will hurt you like a seventh grade girl uh, when they you're rejected from your girlfriends. So don't do that, but that's a tool you can explore. I've had mixed success on that. The truth of it is, is engage with your community. Um, social media isn't about buying followers or buying likes. It's about engaging with people who are interested in your brand. You're never going to be Taylor Swift, you know, and have a uh, celebrity status. That's okay. Or maybe you are, maybe you're a budding rock star and I don't know that, but, um, for the most part, we're not celebrities. We're not going to have millions of people like our accounts. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. The people who follow you should engage in a way that actually make a difference to your organization. So, so think about that. So you like people go out and, and, you know, follow them and they'll, and, and maybe they'll follow you back. Don't expect it, but that that's what happens in social comment on their things, get engaged in their brand as well, or in what they're doing. That's one way. Um, another way, of course, is to engage with a nonprofit. If you're a retail, you know, do a project for them or support them. And, you know, you could help each other reciprocally. Another question I get, and this is the last question for today, is about selfies. Are they okay? Well, I'm not anti-selfie. I think that they have their place. Uh, and they just need to be done well. So I will include a link underneath this video about front to Allie Worthington's great post on taking a selfie. Here's a word to the wise. Women, get out of the bathroom. No one wants to see your toilet when you're taking a picture of yourself at your most beautiful. Um, if you need a full-length mirror in your house, go purchase one uh, if that's how you're taking your selfies. Uh, for the most part, though, you know, in moderation. Let's think of it all this way. Um, 
60% of the information should be uh, showing showing your brand, showing you know a consistent uh, of your brand. Twenty uh, percent of it should be you know quotes or sharing other people's things, and then twenty percent should be selling product or ideas or concepts. Um, so that's sort of a good way to balance all of that, you know. And the selfie might fall, <laughs> fall into the one of those twenty percent buckets, but uh, definitely people want to see who you are. You're a real person. Be authentic. Be yourself. And remember, you know, just do good. Do good work. Be great. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Co Constant Contact. I can't do this without them. Um, they allow me the opportunity to offer these free webinars whenever I want. So uh, I'd like to just say thank you to them and give you the opportunity. If you haven't tried email marketing, I'm here for you if that's something that you're interested in. I also wanted to say they have a variety of, of products that they have. I just ran an event through them, including collecting payments. It was seamless. If you run events um, and need help, this is a great tool for you, one that you might not know of. It sort of takes all of the outside event ideas or applications out there and pulls it into one easy to manage um, space. So happy to talk to you about what, what's available. And again, just thanks to them for the opportunity to share these webinars uh, for free. So you can find me at JacquelineWolven.com. On Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, it's Jackie Wolven. And uh, JacquelineWolven at gmail.com if you have questions. I'd love your feedback. I'd love to hear what you'd like in the next webinars coming up. And I appreciate you being here. Do good. Be great. Thanks. I hope to see you soon.